Hi, my name is Alyssa Tracy, and this is my speech entitled Marie Laveau, the Voodoo Queen of New Orleans. Close your eyes and imagine yourself walking through a ghostly cemetery at midnight. An eerie fog just above the ground and the sound of an owl in the distance. You're not going to a friend's grave or a relative's grave, but to that of someone powerful. You start to tremble. Your hands get sweaty your curiosity pulling you closer and closer. You pull out a flashlight and shine it upon the grave. Open your eyes. Where are you? You're standing in front of Marie Laveau's grave in southern Louisiana, otherwise known as the Voodoo Queen of New Orleans. Being Cajun and growing up with a lot of family from Louisiana is what led me to my deep curiosity of Marie Laveau. I grew up hearing of wives' tales and my grandfather used to tell me that if I wasn't good or I didn't behave myself, he would send the queen after me. This really got me curious as to who she was and what voodoo was. So that's why I'm here today, to share with you exactly who was Marie Laveau, what voodoo is, what her daughter Marie Laveau II did after her death, and her legacy that still carries on today. Marie Laveau was born on September 10th, 1794, as a free colored woman. In 1819, she married Jacques Paris in, in the St. Louis Cathedral in New Orleans. Six months later, he disappeared, and she became known as the Widowed Paris. A year later, she remarried a man named Christopher Glapion, and together they had five children. In those five children was her daughter, Marie Laveau II. Marie Laveau grew up a devout Catholic. She attended Mass daily. As the start of her career, she was a hairdresser, and then she later became a nurse when the yellow fever epidemics broke out in the South. She was very well practiced in medicine and knew well the cures of herbs mixed with the right medium. Above all, though, Marie Laveau was a businesswoman. She knew how to take favors and to make favors. Many people traveled far, far distances just to ask her for a favor. She worked along the side and was an allied force of great men. But when it came to her voodoo, it was romance and finances that she specialized in. She resided at her house at 1020 St. Anne Street in New Orleans on Jackson Square which would also be the place of her death on Thursday, June 16, 1881. Nobody knows what really happened to her. Some people say that she died peaceful, an old woman in her bed, and others say that maybe her death was that much as mysterious as her life. And other people say that she was beheaded. Although it may seem like Marie Laveau was a pretty normal person, when it came to her voodoo, it was not normal at all. According to Urban Dictionary, voodoo is a Haitian religion combining Catholicism and West African-influenced and animist beliefs. Voodoo deities are called loas, and they are closely paired with the Catholic saints. Voodoo, as many see it now, was never a religious practice, but quite the opposite. It was considered to be witchcraft, which is why the Catholic Church outlawed it. Her voodoo helped save people's lives, but yet it also could destroy people's lives. According to voodooonthebayou.net, she could easily help you get a lover, keep a lover, but she could also help you lose a lover. She helped, as I stated before, she helped many great men, businessmen, with how to succeed in growing their business or expanding. She would always give them a solution as to how they could do it successfully, and the scary thing was, she was always right. After so many of these occurrences, people started to question her, wonder who this woman was, because at that time it was weird that a colored woman knew, seemed to know more of how to succeed in business than these men did. Another weird observation many made of her was that she always had a pet snake wrapped around her shoulders. Anytime she would be doing her chants or dancing or praying to the spirits, as she called it, 
she would always have her snake zombie wrapped around her shoulders. There's a lot of mysteries when it comes to her tales. Nobody knows which ones are true, which ones were made up. But there is one tale that I grew up with, one that's always been in my head since I was a little kid, and that is the tale of Andrew Jackson. It has been told to me that they did not know each other but once before. And when he went up to introduce himself to her, he had heard of her weird witchcrafty things. And in his eyes, he didn't see her as a woman, but yet this evil person. So when he went up to introduce himself to her, he did not tip his hat as most men do to a lady in that time. She was angered by this because she was a beautiful woman. So she went up to him and said, Sir, you will tip your hat to me one day every single day of your life. Years later passed, and if you go to her house in Jackson Square, and you go up to her second floor window, which was her bedroom, and you look out, in the middle of the square is a statue of Andrew Jackson. That statue is of him on a horse, tipping his hat directly toward Marie Laveau's window. Some may think that this is a coincidence, but when people who truly believe in Marie Laveau, as I do, it's not coincidence at all. Marie Laveau II, her daughter, confused a lot of people when it came to Marie Laveau I's death. After Marie Laveau I's death, many saw Marie Laveau still walking the streets of New Orleans. She'd go by the French market, all this other stuff, and they still thought that they were seeing Marie Laveau. However, they came to they came to discover that it was actually her daughter, Marie Laveau II, who, like her mother, they looked extremely alike. She would never quite match up to her mother's fame, even though she carried on her voodoo and the same career as being a hairdresser. But as Dr. Romeo Vitelli states, although her daughter attempted to carry on her voodoo work, she never matched her mother's fame. It would be shameful to think that a woman like Marie Laveau wouldn't be thought of or dedicated to anything today. But it's wrong. There is a ton of stuff, especially if you go down to New Orleans, that is in dedication of her. You can find handfuls of voodoo museums. And of course, each museum has their special section on Marie Laveau. She also has a shop named after her that you can find on the famous Bourbon Street in New Orleans called Marie Laveau's House of Voodoo. In this shop you can find your basic souvenirs such as hats and t-shirts and keychains. But there's also some souvenirs that would make your trip just a little extra special. That of voodoo dolls and herbs that you can use to cure people. But the most exciting thing about that shop was part that I got to experience. In the back of the shop, they have a professional tarot card reader or palm reader. You can choose of your choice. I did the tarot cards. But you can go back there and for a fee, of course, you can get your cards read or your palm read to you. I was freakishly surprised at how accurate they actually were. But you can also see her legacy beyond just buildings. It even comes in to children's culture today, as you can see in the recent Disney movie, The Princess and the Frog. The movie takes place in New Orleans, and of course it's animated characters, you know, the prince and the princess, they fall in love, dot dot dot. But a little twist to this one is that voodoo is involved. There's two characters in the movie, a voodoo man who does his for bad, and then the voodoo lady, Mama Odie, who is there to represent Marie Laveau in New Orleans. There's a lot to be said about this extraordinary lady who lived a very mysterious life. She helped people with her magic, but she could also hurt you and put a gree on you if you got in her way. She was a very religious individual and is the definition of a voodoo queen who did as much good as she did evil. She was an eerie individual, and her spirit lived long due to the fact that people were confused by her and her daughter. 
People say, though, that when her daughter died, that she died along with her, but many would disagree. They say today that if you go to her grave and you offer up a gift in replacement for a grigri or a curse or a spell upon somebody, that that gift or that request will come true. As Voodoo on the Bayou.net states, Marie Laveau is a name that was respected by everybody and dreaded by a lot of people.